Hello, and welcome to Global Data Themes Instant Insights. At Global Data, we define a theme as something that keeps a CEO awake at night, as businesses that invest in important themes will succeed, and those that don't will fail. Hello, and welcome to Global Data Instant Insights. Today, we have one of our favorite guests here again, Steve Blitz from TS Lombard, the Chief US Economist. How are you doing, Steve? Great, great. How are you? I'm doing very well, thank you. I'm, I'm looking forward to today's episode. We've got a lot to cover, a lot going on, so I can't wait to hear what you think of it. Uh, so the first question, obviously the biggest news in US economics at the moment has got to be to do with the US debt ceiling and with the limit being suspended. To me, it just seems like this keeps happening. And it, is it just kicking the can down the road or is this really going to solve any problems? No, it doesn't solve any problem. I mean, you keep ha- you, you have a deficit in the government spending every year. It's just a matter of math that every year your debt rises to that ceiling and then you have to raise the ceiling again. You know, there have been periods of time where we haven't had to do that either because we had strict controls on spending and or we went through a period of capital deepening like in the 90s uh, where the government actually went from deficit to surplus. It really isn't a good idea for the economy to, to actively, as opposed to passively from revenue, which is what happened in the 90s, but to actively cut spending to create a surplus to bring down the debt or to actually pay down the debt is really foolish economic policy. The, the big and deeper question is, is all this spending necessary to keep the economy afloat? Because it doesn't seem like there's anyone is really responsible for it. You know, you can just keep raising the ceiling. You know, what could happen eventually if they keep raising it too much? Is it just going to implode? What's, what's going to happen? Well, no, because, you know, if you look at the debt, I mean, the debt shot up relative to GDP, so it's high. The debt's not going to grow as rapidly in the coming years simply because you had this one-time upshift in borrowing because of COVID, where you went from a trillion-dollar deficit to a three-trillion-dollar deficit. Now you're back to a trillion-dollar deficit. But as long as the cost of the debt is growing even or less slowly than GD, nominal GDP growth, it's not a problem, right? Mm-hmm. Because, you know, it's just like if you know your income is going to grow 10% a year nominally, there are costs in your life that you can keep adding on as, as long as they're not growing faster than 10% a year. Right. Yeah. Uh, and so, and, and so, and the, and the average, you know, the price of the, the interest rate on the debt is low. And if you look at like a lot of people are pointing to, um, you know, how much debt, because you had this upward immediate upward shift in the, in the amount of debt issued because of COVID, but you're still actually as a percent of total expenditures below where you were at the end of the Reagan Bush years. And would, is is to, could you describe to the listeners is debt inherently bad? Is debt inherently bad? Well, let's put it on a personal level. So you borrow money and you have debt to own real estate. Is that bad debt? If you're borrowing money from your friends every day so that you have enough money to buy lunch, is that bad debt? Your your your, your income and your spending are out of line, right? And you're borrowing to kind of get it into line. So one's an investment, one's borrowing money to make a capital investment in yourself, uh, and the other is because on your your operational basis, you are running a deficit and you're borrowing money to fill it, which only means you're going to be kind of running in place, trying to try running in place really and never catching up to that. Unless, you know, you either get a marked big increase in your income or you do something to reduce your expenses. And in the United States, every state has an operating budget and a capital budget and every city has an operating budget and a capital budget. And generally, operating budgets should be balanced and should be funded by ongoing tax revenue. And the capital budget, you're supposed to borrow because you're borrowing money against something that's going to provide income in the future. I'd like to I'd like to move on to monetary policy next. So we we time these podcasts very well. I think last time it was a week before the next our FOMC meeting and next week there's an FOMC meeting. But yeah, what what are your predictions for next week's meeting? What can you see the Fed funds rate being? Uh they're going to keep the they're not going to raise the rate next week. They're going to keep it right where it is. Uh in fact this morning we got a jump of 30,000 in in initial claims and unemployment. There might have been special factors involved in popping that up, so it could reverse a lot of that could reverse in the coming weeks. But last month, 
you actually did see a drop in the number of employed. So the unemployment rate went up, not because you had many more people entering the workforce looking for work and not no jobs, but actually there were more people unemployed. They're looking at the pullback on credit extensions from the banking system. And so even though you don't have a bank failure a week, it doesn't mean that there aren't pressures and problems within the banking system that are being addressed. You know, people forget, you know, uh, and I'm not saying another bank's going to fail here, but people forget, you know, Bear Stearns went down in March and everyone said, okay, we solved it, everything's fine. And then we lost Lehman six months later. So, you know, we, we have this tendency to say, you know, okay, the dam broke, everything's fine, you know, on to the next story. The same story is percolating on the, and the Fed knows that. There's one thing they do know, they do know what's going on in the banking system because that's your job. The Fed is, I think, is absolutely in its rights to simply say, we're not going in June, but, and, and, and in the press conference, Powell, and in the statement, they'll make it very clear that pause does not mean impending reversal, which historically it has in the U.S., that they could start hiking again as soon as July or the meeting afterwards. They just want to see how all these things shake out. The underlying or over message in that is that the Fed really does not want to create a recession, even though it has one in its forecast, even though the, the, the staff at the Fed thinks there is going to be a mild recession in the second half of the year, and I happen to agree. And I think it may be starting right now. It's just that we haven't seen the employment numbers really kick in yet and a few other things. to. But mm. so they're in their rights to take this time. But they really the Fed is holds to a perspective that all this stuff washes through come some point in the future. The economy mm. is naturally going to go back to where it was pre-COVID. And we just want to finish with some some predictions. You know, we love a prediction here. Uh, last time you okay. were here, your infamous date that you gave us predicting the U.S. recession was the 23rd of June. Are you sticking or twisting with that? I'm sticking to the 23rd of June. OK, <laughs> interesting. I think, look, I, I think we're going to have close to zero growth in, in we had a little, little, little over one in Q1. I think it'll be weaker in Q2. I think inventory will, will hold it down a little bit. The trade sector will hold it down. Uh, we'll see about consumption versus Q1, which was boosted basically by a, a surge in January spending because he had some big income inflows in that month, which are not being repeated. And, you know, and I think and I think we're go- heading into a mild recession and the unemployment rate's going to head up. I'm, I'm holding to the J- June 23rd uh, as the official start. And uh, maybe we'll have a little party at Trafalgar Square. We'll have like a countdown, like on New Year's Eve or something, and uh, or, and, and and see what see what uh, and see what transpires. You know, so well, there you have it. Twenty third of June. Keep it in your diaries. It's is Steve's final prediction. Yeah. Thank you so much, Steve, for those instant insights. Thanks for listening, and from us in the Fematic Intelligence team, we'll see you next time. <laughs>